Good morning, Mayor Pete. Thank you for coming on to the Al and Big Mo Show. Good to be uh, with you. I know you're pretty busy going around uh, South Bend or even across the United States, um, you know, campaigning. Um, how do you do that? How do you run a city and then, you know, run a campaign at the same time? How does that? How do well, you do it's that? not easy, but uh, that's uh, a part of what you have to learn to do in this process. Almost everybody who runs for president has a very significant job at the same time, and uh, it's no different in this case. Uh, the the key to it all is having a team that uh, can make the absolute most of your time. Uh, so things are prepared so that by the time I see it, it's ready for a decision uh, or it's ready for the, the part of the process that only I can do. And we make sure that everything else, all the groundwork, all the legwork uh, happens in the background so that we can uh, really maximize the time that I have on the ground and, and the time that I have to uh, engage in any part of a city process. Right. So you, t you do tend to get a lot of attention from uh, millennials and younger voters, um, but maybe not so much the older generation. How do you how do you plan to bridge that gap? One of the things we're finding, uh, especially as we travel, is that uh, you don't have to be young to care about the future. And so uh, we certainly have a, an affinity with uh, younger voters and, and younger audiences, but we're also seeing a lot of people appear at our events who are my parents' age. And I think uh, they have a real uh, desire, a passion even, for making sure that their children and their grandchildren do well, uh, which means that uh, uh, the idea of leaders emerging from a new generation is, is very appealing to them as well. Right. So several Democrats like yourself are um, working towards de uh, or abolishing the uh, Electoral College. Um, what are some of the challenges in doing that and what do you think that could impact? Well, the Electoral College has a very mixed history in this country. Uh, just twice in my lifetime, it's overruled the American people in the vote for president. And I think as a democracy, the way we should choose our president is simply to take everybody's votes and give it to the person who got the most. That's how most democracies work. Um, in order to change it, we would need to do one of two things, either a constitutional amendment to uh, officially change the structure of the election, or an agreement among all of the states that uh, when, uh, when the popular vote is known, all of the members of the Electoral College honor that vote. Um, there is a, a project to get states to sign on to that. It's called a National Interstate Compact. That's probably a little bit easier to achieve than the constitutional amendment, but I think we should do both. And one of the things that will happen when we do that is uh, voices of voters here in Indiana will matter more. Right now, campaigns only pay attention to states that are kind of right in the middle. Right. So because we're a more conservative state, whether you are a Democrat or a Republican, uh, you get much less attention than other states. And I want to level the playing field so that everybody's vote counts exactly the same. Now, health care is a big concern here in America. Mm -hmm. The recent survey showed 4 in 10 adults are unsatisfied with their health care costs. How do you feel about that? Well, it's clearly a big problem that uh, health care is too costly and too many people go without good health insurance. And that means that uh, you're going to have worse outcomes over time. We are not the healthiest country, uh, even though we are the country that spends the most uh, out, of our, out of our overall economy on health care. And so we've got to make sure that the system is more efficient, that the dollars that go into it actually result in good outcomes. And we have to make sure it's more equitable. In other words, making sure that people of different backgrounds are able able to access quality health care. No matter what your race, no matter what your income, everybody should be able to have that. It's one of the reasons why I favor a pathway to universal health care, so that you don't just have to be lucky and have a, a good job with a good employer with a good insurance plan in order to know that you're going to get taken care of. Uh, now, my final question is, if you become president, um, is there anything special that you have planned or anything specific for South Bend? Uh, well, uh, you know, uh, I think every president has a hometown connection. I just had a chance to visit with President Carter, for example, in his hometown of Plains, Georgia. It's a tiny community, uh, fewer than a thousand people, I think. Um, but uh, it's now known for, for having produced President Carter. Um, the South Bend's story is a very big part of how I'm uh, campaigning and speaking across the country because I want people to learn about how a community like ours that has faced economic hardship, racial inequality, all of the big issues in America come to life right here in South Bend. And we're working on them in ways that I think are very uplifting. And so uh, if nothing else, by sharing that story and honoring that story, I think I'll have a chance to, to do some, some good for our hometown even while I'm trying to serve the country as a whole. Thank you very much, Pete. Thank you so much. All right. Good to be with you. Keep it up.